Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk AI, Trust, Innovation, People, powered by EY.AI, where we prompt our human guests about the fascinating world of artificial intelligence and its profound impact on the workplace. I'm your host, Michael Avery, and today we've got someone who is at the forefront of driving innovation and digital transformation in Africa, Amay Thwaites, uh, EY Africa's Assurance Innovation and Digital Leader. Amay, uh, a great pleasure having you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Michael. I'm looking forward to this podcast with you. Now, before we dive into what is a a fascinating, very fast-moving world of AI and its effects on the workforce, could you just share with our audience what your role as EY Africa's Assurance Innovation and Digital Leader entails? My role is really to drive innovation and adoption of our digital transformation amongst our assurance practitioners. So I work very closely with leaders across the globe, um, really being at the forefront of what's happening internationally, but then also working closely with our clients here. Um, It's important to understand our local requirements and needs and challenges so that we can bring the two together to ultimately, in, in my profession as the assurance innovation leader, to enhance audit quality and really drive that value um, for our clients. Um, It's also about fostering a culture of adoption of innovation amongst everyone. So not just looking at my team, the innovation and digital techies, but also, you know, fostering that culture amongst the, the broader firm. And that's something that EY is certainly taking very seriously. So it really places you at the center of the strategic transformation that's currently, uh, you know, under underway, I mean, which is interesting on the one hand, it's a, a bit daunting, I guess, on the other. Let's just focus on the heart of our discussion today. Can you shed some light on just some of the advantages that AI brings to uh, businesses' workforce? So when we look at this um, from an employer perspective, I think we can expect increased productivity in, in this space. Because when we look at AI and and these emerging technologies, it's really going to enhance and fast track some of those mundane tasks that takes forever to complete. And and so we are immediately seeing an impact on productivity. Um, I also think what you can expect is enhanced decision making. So when we look at large volumes of data, it can take forever to, to really spot those anomalies. And with the use of AI, you can fast track that that decision making, really focusing on where where the risk lies. I also, you know, we we reflect about this the other day around you know customer experience. So we do know chatbots and and those type of technologies have been around um, for many years, but with AR, we see that it it fast tracks that that decision where you know where in the line if you are having a query and you need to to solve a problem with a with a bot. It uses machine learning because it's now starting to learn and 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 really bucket your 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 questioning into the right um, direction. So to really start looking out for an improved customer um, experience amongst the the workforce. I also think um, what we what we in the assurance profession is really around job satisfaction. So yeah. you know we think about back in the day when we used to have our green and red and 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 black pens and and really some of the people may resonate with me um, from a paper based audits is you know those were the the tasks we didn't really like to do the ticking and bashing and um, you know capturing information where you're starting to allow people to really explore on high value tasks and less so much on on the mundane tasks. And that's really exciting because ultimately when you talk about white collar employees, it is about uh, exercising those higher cognitive functions. That That's what gives you real purpose. It's what drives you forward. It's what challenges you at work. It's certainly not uh, the, the different colored pens and ticking the boxes. And I was just reading the other day about how MTN, for example, is now using AI and machine learning in some of its contact centers. So I think it's just fascinating how AI is reshaping the landscape of work. From your experience, are businesses, workforces readily embracing the benefits of AI and integrated, uh, you know, into their operations, or are we still a little bit hesitant in South Africa and kind of taking a wait and see approach? So I think it's a it's an interesting era to to be to be living in. If we compare ourselves about 10, 15 years ago, where the big buzzwords about big data and you know other emerging technologies such as RPA were born. 
Um, a lot of companies were sort of understanding what does this mean? And, and those were challenging aspects to integrate into your organizations. We I think here we are definitely seeing an increase acceptance of the benefits of AI. So we recently launched our CEO report and you would have noticed about two thirds of the CEOs already accepting and acknowledging the benefits of AI. So we definitely seeing the early adopters. So when you talk about your big tech giants, they're out there, they're adopting fast, accelerating. Um, and, and so that is sort of expected. But when we look at the mainstream adoption, we do see a lot of companies and a lot of clients asking around this, asking what this means. There's a lot of requests for training and educating their staff. So I really think it's a bit of a different topic to where we've used to be talking about tech. Because here, what we see, it will benefit and impact, in fact, each and every one in, in almost all the um, industries out there. So not just focus at your tech companies and sort of waiting for them to evolve, but it really will, will, will impact everyone. So definitely an increased interest in this space. Everyone is talking about this. But I do think there's the reality around the regulatory and the legal aspects around this. So when we look at you know, some of those laws that we still need to overcome, it, it doesn't mean that we're not adopting. It just delays or slows down the adoption. But I really think it is going to be a different topic for the next decade, um, you know, compared to our you know, traditional emerging technologies. I love one conversation we're having in the media around the evolving regulatory and legal landscape is around IP, for example. You know, what happens if you are a copywriter and you're using a chat GPT type um, a large language model to produce copy and, you know, there's no attribution? What, what are the, the various IP copyright uh, infringements or, or, or none that, that you may be breaching? So it's very interesting. And I think, you know, coupled with that, we've got the evolution of the job landscape. And that's a topic, certainly in South Africa, on everyone's mind because we've got such high unemployment Considering the integration of AI technologies, how do you foresee the overall job market evolve? So, I mean, this question everyone's asking, you know, you know, will will there be jobs that be, become mundane and, you know, what does that mean? I, I do think we need to take a step back and, and really look at the organization around where the pain points are. So we really haven't cracked the nut around focusing our attention on where the risk lies, on the high value task. And so I really think if we apply and adopt the AI appropriately, it will allow us to actually really automate those tasks, not just taking data and, and putting it visually, but now starting to make decisions for you, because that will actually allow you to redeploy people in other areas. And if we just take, you know, look at the assurance profession, I mean, this is something we are working hard um, to, to get our quality standards and, and, and you know, tools to adapt to this quite right. And so for us, it's very interesting to see how we can move our people to actually focus on where the risk and anomalies lies. So you're almost going to see a redeployment happening. And I think companies and businesses will enjoy this because you, you alleviating pressure on these, these vast volumes, pain points of your business, where you can now start applying more professional judgment and, and skepticism around this. Um, and then, of course, with all of these technologies, there's this new job creation. I mean, you've heard it. We've all seen it, that there's, there's what we call the prompter, which is quite important yeah. because we actually, you know, we, when we do our research, we realize people who don't know how to apply AI and how to prompt these chatbots really struggle um, with the output because it, it really is also a skill to have to know what to ask. I mean, just the other day, we, we had this topic around a, a, ch a child's um, you know, research for a five-year-old school project, and it was around what were the big trends in 2050. And you know, the, the parents were typing, you know, what are the big trends for 2015? And it spits out this, this, this large words and, and something that a five-year-old wouldn't necessarily be able to relay. So this is just an example to, to expand the importance of when you prompt it, you know, you actually have to yeah. tell chat GPT, you know, I'm doing a project for a five-year-old. I just need it in a simple term that they can understand. So those are sort of the things that um, we really, you know, that's going to allow for new job creations um, at prompting. And, and also not to forget the an, an analysis of the output. 
So once yeah. you know you you get your results from this, what do you do with this? Do we really have that critical thinking in place to apply our judgment as to you know what to do with this information? So again, you're going to look at you know a new skill required in in that space. Very compelling perspective, and especially when it comes to the skills that are going to be required and the ability, I think, to understand how large language models work, you know, how the technology, I don't think you've, you've got to be a coder or, you know, a data scientist, but just to understand the basics of, you know, uh, how it tends to build its answers on a probability scale using tokens. And then um, that will allow you to prompt in the correct fashion. And I found it, you know, playing with ChatGPT a lot amazing how you can imbue it with a certain persona or character type. I can say, have a look at these company results from the perspective of a chartered financial analyst looking for these. And and it, you know, it, it doesn't get it 100% right, but it's almost there. And uh, I think it's fascinating. Well, what are the key skills? If you were to look at from a, from a, a skills perspective that we would need to start acquiring now to remain competitive in this dynamic job market, what would they be? Now, I like the fact that you touch on the point that you don't need to be a coder. And I think this is what makes it so different. Um, we're not just going to look at the, the data scientists in the room to, to utilize this. We're actually going to look at everyone, you know, and, and there's going to be this expectation around how you're utilizing it to benefit um, from your own personal perspective. So it goes without saying data literacy and, and just a, a appropriate understanding of AI and machine learning will, will benefit you. So you do need to know some of the restrictions and limitations and like we discussed around how to prompt and how to view the results. And so I can already see that that's going to be a skill um, set required. If we look at the assurance profession industry, more specifically the auditors, now for many, many years, um, already, we've been working hard at, at understanding what our curriculums are, and you know how do we embrace technology already at a at a student level? You know to to to, to understand what does this mean because the way we audit it has changed and evolved significantly. But the most important part for this for me is is really critical thinking and problem solving. I think that is going to be a key skill. In, in separating and, and giving you that competitive edge. Because what do you do with the outcome? How do you come up with ideas? How do you challenge um, you know, the result appropriately? How do you apply that professional judgment? So this is an area where we really want to push everyone um, in the organizations to start learn that, that critical thinking aspect um, yeah. of it. And, and our I, education, I, and our education system, I mean, because I've got young children age six and nine now, they, they're doing coding in school and they're already starting on this journey of, of learning the new language of, of business. But I think critical thinking, that's got to be how, because I, I sit and I think, well, if my five-year-old daughter, to use that example, is going to be able to generate a project using uh, a chat GPT, for example, well, that doesn't necessarily demonstrate an insight or understanding. So the, the education system's got to start really focusing on, on critical thinking. No, you're 100% right. I mean, we see it with the kids. Even my kids, they, they challenge us in, in the use of technology. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. What we mustn't forget is the emotional intelligence and, and sort of that soft skill with this. And, and this area, we're getting very excited around data literacy and, um, you know, just basic IT understanding. And as you now just mentioned, you know, kids already, you know, our kids are learning about coding and coming home with, look at this app that I built. Um, and it's incredible to see, but the human element is going to be also so much more important as we get more sucked into this technology era. How do we make sure that we remain that, collab you know, bring in the collaboration aspect into the room, bring the leadership skills, the soft skills, because we still need that collaboration amongst ourselves. Yeah, I was chatting to Dave Reinders. He's the chief tech officer of Merchant Capital the other day about whether or not we're going to see AI revolutionizing funding for SMEs. That's really where they play as an alternative lender. He said, yeah, Michael, we, we really use some of these tools to credit score and to vet and to filter. But ultimately, the decision doesn't rest with the AI. It's still a human decision. We still got to understand the jockey. We still got to use some of you know, some of our understanding and human relational skills 
in order to decide whether or not we're going to back that particular jockey. And I don't think that is going to change. Uh, in fact, it probably becomes even more important. That said, innovation tech are integral to EY's operations. Could you share some examples of how EY is leveraging AI to revolutionize businesses? So the, the the important thing is here we've 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 been on this data journey. So you know I do want to take us back again ten years where it was important for us to get the data. There was so much data out there, structured, unstructured, and so companies were really starting to to learn the the value of you know once I get insight out of that data, what can I do? We then evolved on to automating some of these tasks and and building dashboards more faster using robotic process automation technologies. But now we, we're taking this a huge step forward and we're saying, okay, how do we augment this? How do we bring in machine learning using the, the two components to really bring that intelligence automation? So we at EY are really looking at um, using this technology to identify anomalies and um, risk behaviors. I mean, that is of utmost importance of what we do is understanding the risk of the business, where we need to focus and how we can help our clients um, identify these anomalies. So traditionally speaking, if you would have a human, it it was nearly impossible to work through this vast amount of data. And even if we were able to automate some of these processes, it was still mundane tasks and and lengthy tasks to get to. So now we are taking that a step further and, and implementing smart AI, what we call intelligent automation, really giving that starting to learn behaviors and anomalies that we can adapt and build and, and provide more sustainable solutions for our clients. And it's incredible to see. It's still a very narrow-based AI, but it's truly transformative. Uh, if you look at the power of this AI in action, just the ability to, um, on a level that's far superior to human cognition, go through vast amounts of data. We're not talking about general artificial intelligence yet. I still think we're some way off from that. But lastly, Amit, do you have any exciting plans or projects involving AI that you can give us just a sneak peek into? Yeah, so I'm very excited about our $1.4 billion investment in this space. And I mean, it really talks to, you know, how serious we are going to take it. It's not just a wait and see. We are really trying to educate every single one in our firm. I mean, that's really undergoing as we're talking at different levels, different skill levels. So really embracing that that adoption amongst the practice. Um, and then obviously with the launch of our EYQ, uh, which is our own private chat GPT and our own private cloud, it's now just taking that step further where we can now actually start build technologies with, with our clients' um, data and, and take that sort of a step further. So very exciting times um, for us lying ahead um, as we are embracing this this new technology. Remarkable. Amay Thwaites, thank you. Truly a trailblazer, the realm of digital innovation. Very grateful for your insights today and I look forward to chatting to you in the future as this technology evolves at such a breakneck speed. Take care. Thank you, Michael. All the best.